weekend has come once again. I'm Jesse and this is church. Uh, before we get into worship, can I ask you a question? Today, just today, how many times have you complained? How many times have you said something encouraging? Weigh those out. Are you, are you kind of tipping the scales? Because worship is a chance where you can maybe tip in the other direction. Uh, Stephanie, what do you think? Our words can be used as a tool for both good and for bad. The Bible actually describes our words as a fire. Used wrong, our words can bring great loss and pain. But used right, it can bring warmth and light into a dark world. That's what I love about worship. It's that we can use our words to bring hope and love and the truth of Jesus into a dark world. So right now, let's worship together and honor God with our words. It's moving close, now I see Erase the scales from my eyes Then play the scale of my life Chaos played off with a chord and a chord With a source preventing through strife and I've tasted suffering, I've been embraced by the painful buffering I've been bound by doubt so loud right now But a melody is made when you play these rusty keys So we all gotta get pressed Tuned up like instruments But I know all of life's tempo is set Whenever we remember this in the madness, there's peace Drowning out the voice all around me through all of this chaos You are writing a symphony, a symphony And even in the madness there is peace Drowning out the voices All around me through all of this chaos You are writing a symphony, a symphony 
horizon your freedom you are good when you make a promise Jesus you keep yes, you are good so I praise your name as long as I'm breathing yes, you are good. come on and I'm not a slave to sin so I'm singing you are Thanks for worshiping with us. So before we get into today's episode, I have a question for you. Um, the comment section question, so you can go to the comments and, and write in your answer. Would you rather uh, be super talented at everything, but always get blamed when things go wrong? Or would you rather have no talent at all, but always get the credit when things go right? So you can be super talented, and, and everyone thinks that you're just a bumbling buffoon, or you can have no talent at all, and everyone thinks that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Both are super, super unfair, but which one would you choose? You know, I, I really can't choose. This, is, this one's a really tough one. Uh, if you're not sitting with someone right now, if you could get some people from your family, church is meant to be done with people, so go ahead and grab them, sit them on the couch, and get ready because we're going to the Loop Show. What's up, Loopsters? Did I say that right? You said it great. Awesome. So we are taking a look back at some of our favorite episodes, and this time we're taking a look at our cricket episode where we talked about justice, and we got to eat some of these yummy, yummy crickets. Yeah, some of you uh, doubted if we were actually eating crickets, but yes, here is a sample bowl of crickets. They're all right there. These are, look at them. These are all crickets. Look at their little ugly bodies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, that's a that's The bodies a don't mind me. It's the eyeballs. Yeah, they have little eyeballs. <laughs> and I, I learned mind over matter. I was able to just, just pop them in. All right, me too as much well. About oh, that one's kind of a big one. Insect. Blah. All right. Cheers. Tink. Ah, mm. it's awfully crunchy. Mm-hmm. Well, let's stop crunching about it and let's watch it. Check it out. Hi, I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And today we're talking about what is fair and what isn't. Raise your hand if you've ever said, it's not fair. Come on, that should be every single hand. We've all said that at some point in time <laughs> in our life. <laughs> Studies show that our idea of what's fair and not fair starts at the age of three or four. Wow, that's pretty young. Yeah, so if you're a three or four year old, welcome to the internet. You know what's fair and what's not fair, like ending the segment, totally unfair. A lot of things that we had planned, it's not fair. Why would you end it? Why would you end the segment like that? <laughs> it's not fair. That's not fair. Ugh. Come on, that's 
That's not fair. Yeah? Hey, it's time to go to bed already. How come Christopher doesn't have to go to bed? Because Christopher doesn't have school tomorrow. That's not fair. You guys, I've been at an amusement park all day and I just stood in line for two hours and the ride broke down. Broke down, done, they were like, you guys should better leave. Uh, guys, I wanted to scream, I wanted to cry, I wanted to grab whatever was in my reach and start throwing it everywhere. Because you know what, it's not fair. Okay, it wasn't really two hours, more like an hour and 15 minutes, but still that's basically the same thing. And you know what, it's not fair. It's not fair. And then I got to thinking. Yeah. What I'm saying when I say this isn't fair, is this isn't fair for me. This isn't fair for the 115 minutes that I spent waiting in line for this ride. Rather than thinking about the attendant who's been working here all day, who now has to deal with 200 people who want to rip his head off. But really, Jesus calls us to something else, right? He calls us to think about other people more than we think about ourselves. What's fair for that attendant? What's fair for someone else? You see, we've got another word for fairness, right? We call it justice. Justice is thinking about what is fair for someone else. That's not fair for me, or that's not fair for someone else. If someone cuts in line in front of me, I'm gonna be all kinds of up in arms. But what if they cut in front of the person behind me? Am I gonna have that same reaction? Am I gonna be thinking about what's fair for that person? What about when your sister gets blamed for something that you did? Is that fair for her? What are you gonna do? You gonna let her take the fall for it? Or are you gonna fight for what's fair for her, even if it costs you something. How about the next time you're upset that you didn't get a hoverboard for your birthday? You think about what's fair for your parents who worked their butts off to make the money to get you what you did get. Why don't we think about someone else? You know, guys, that takes courage. It takes a lot of courage. Because listen, I'm a small person. You can't see it. I'm like 4'11". I'm a small person. If I don't look out for myself, who's going to do it? But in thinking about myself, I'm missing an opportunity to love someone to Jesus. So instead of taking this time to feel upset, throw things, and cry, why not take an opportunity to connect with the attendant, to make their day, to let them know that, yeah, someone might be a jerk to you because of something that's not your fault. Don't miss opportunities to fight for fairness well, for someone else. Today we are justice come to life. Do we look like Lady Justice? <laughs> Flawless execution. So typically Lady Justice is blindfolded to show that justice is impartial and equal. To demonstrate that, we are going to do a blind justice challenge. In the blind justice challenge, we have one minute on the clock and wearing blindfolds, we have to choose blocks to place on the scale to equal one pound. You can't talk to each other about what you're choosing. Place the weighted blocks on the scale in front of you. The goal is to make both scales be equal. Because whatever the difference is between the two scales is the weight of crickets. Uh, must eat. Oh, that must be what these are back here for. That's what those crickets are for. Do, okay. Do, do, do. Oh, don't look at it. Don't, it looks so bad. Don't look at it. Don't. Okay. Oh, it doesn't smell as bad as you would think. Don't smell them. Oh, they still have their eyes. That bothers don't me. I, they look. <laughs> like crickets. It smells like dog food. <sighs> okay, so let's get blindfolded. Oh, blindfolds, right. Out oh, and blindfold check. How many fingers am I holding up? I don't know. Great. Okay, so let's start the challenge. Is there a minute on the clock? Yep. Great, oh, we're going. Are we oh. going? We're no, going. No. I have a feeling we are both gonna eat a substantial amount of crickets today. I don't know how much things weigh. Whoa. I, oh no, okay. Wait, I think, ooh, that feels too heavy. That feels, oh, oh no. Ah, okay, uh, that's my guess. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go with that. Oh. The sound of our impending doom. Okay. Ah, my crown. All right. And my beanie. Let's take a look. How did we do? Oh, no. Oh, what'd you do? No, I was so far off. Um, I had nine ounces. You were so close, I Jamie. I was decently no! close. Mine's at, yeah, mine's at nine. Jamie's is like at 14. So that's five ounces of crickets that you guys have to eat between the two of you. I've doomed us all, Jamie. I'm, I'm so sorry. You guys were close. The right answer is this one and this one and that one makes a pound. Ooh, snacks. <gasps> Who's ready for a pop quiz? Hey, it's Quizman. 
Those, those are awful. I hit a hard part. I'm the quiz man, it's still in my teeth. Lady Justice, what a gal. She's typically depicted with four things. Which of these things is she not typically depicted with? Is it A, a blindfold, B, a clock, C, a scale, or D, a sword? Did you pay attention to that last bit? If you said A and you paid attention to that last bit, you didn't pay attention to that last bit. If you said B, then you are correct. Lady Justice is typically depicted with a blindfold to be impartial, a scale for balance, and a sword for authority. That's how the world depicts justice. How does the Bible depict justice? Let's cut right here and go do something else so I can get some water for that cricket taste in my mouth. If you were a praying mantis, it would be socially acceptable to devour your mate. And if you're a honey badger, you have no regard for other animals. You don't care. If you're a panda with twins, it's normal to abandon one to take care of the other. But if humans do any of these things, we would call it wrong, unfair, or unjust. Yeah, why is that? Why do humans care so much about justice? Well, the Bible has a fascinating response to that question. On page one, humans are set apart from all other creatures as the image of God. Yeah, God's representatives who rule the world by his definition of good and evil. And this identity, it's the bedrock of the Bible's view of justice. All humans are equal before God and have the right to be treated with dignity and fairness no matter who you are. And that would be nice if we all did that, but we know how the world really works. And the Bible addresses that too. It shows how we are constantly redefining good and evil to our own advantage at the expense of others. Yeah, self-preservation. And the weaker someone is, the easier it is to take advantage of them. And so in the biblical story, we see this happening on a personal level, but also in families and then in communities and in whole civilizations that create injustice, especially towards the vulnerable. But the story doesn't end there. Out of this whole mess, God chose a man named Abraham to start a new kind of family. Specifically, Abraham was to teach his family to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. Yeah, doing righteousness, that's a Bible word I don't really use, but what comes to mind is being a good person. But what does that even mean, being good? The biblical Hebrew word for righteousness is tzedakah, and it's more specific. It's an ethical standard that refers to right relationships between people. It's about treating others as the image of God. With the God-given dignity they deserve. And this word justice, it's the Hebrew word mishpat. It can refer to retributive justice. Like if I steal something, I pay the consequences. Exactly. Yet most often in the Bible, mishpat refers to restorative justice. It means going a step further, actually seeking out vulnerable people who are being taken advantage of and helping them. Yeah, some people call this charity. But mishpat involves way more. It means taking steps to advocate for the vulnerable and changing social structures to prevent injustice. So justice and righteousness are about a radical, selfless way of life. Yeah, and you find this idea all over the Bible. So we all participate in injustice, actively or passively, even unintentionally. We're all the guilty ones. And so this is the surprising message of the biblical story. God's response to humanity's legacy of injustice is to give us a gift, the life of Jesus. He did righteousness and justice, and yet he died on behalf of the guilty. But then God declared Jesus to be the righteous one when he rose from the dead. And so now Jesus offers his life to the guilty so that they too can be declared righteous before God, not because of anything they've done, but because of what Jesus did for them. The earliest followers of Jesus experienced this righteousness from God, not just as a new status, but as a power that changed their lives and compelled them to act in surprising new ways. Yeah, if God declared someone righteous when they didn't deserve it, the only reasonable response is to go and seek righteousness and justice for others. This is a radical way of life, and it's not always convenient or easy. It's courageously making other people's problems my problems. This is what Jesus meant by loving your neighbor as yourself. It's about a lifetime commitment fueled by the words of the ancient prophet Micah. God has told you, humans, what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God.
Hey guys, my name is Andre Austin and it takes courage to love your neighbor and to make their troubles your troubles. But how do we do it? We take off the blindfold. Pray for God to open your eyes to justice around you. Where do you see it in action and where do you see it lacking? The Bible says in Micah chapter 6 verse 8 that the Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must treat people fairly. I'm going to say that one more time. You must treat people fairly. You must love others faithfully, and you must be very careful to live the way your God wants you to. God requires us to treat people fairly. All people. Every last one. This cricket's name is Hampton. He had dreams of being a potato farmer, and now he is here on The Loop Show. All right, let's divvy them up. All right, one cup, two cup. All right, so. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, yeah, keep it going. Yeah, a little bit more. You know what? A lot a bit more. A lot a bit more? Yep. You're not even to one ounce yet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, keep going. Do double that and a half. You're not even to two ounces yet, so. Keep it going. All the like cricket residue is just coating my fingers. Little, one is staring at me, it's going in your cup. A little, 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 little bit more. All right, that's it. That's almost an entire cup of cricket. That's 2.5 ounces? No! <laughs> Jamie, we, no. That's not how ounces work. Uh, it can't be how ounces work. This is just awful. Oh my gosh, I need quite a bit more. Yeah, it's always easier to see what you're doing whenever you're not blindfolded. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even drink this much of water in one sitting, let alone a cup full of cricket. See, I would have much preferred it if we did it the other way, where we had to measure an ounce of crickets, otherwise we had to eat blocks. That would make um, this challenge a lot easier. <laughs> okay, hey, bottoms up, Jamie, let's go for it. 2.5 ounces of crickets. For the loop show. For the loop show. You yes. know what? What? I'm just gonna use my imagination. I just went for it. I just went for it. These are delicious sunflower seeds that we are just consuming. And not at all. Oh, that was crickets. spicy. That was spicy. Oh, I feel kind of bad. Oh! <laughs> These eyeballs were like, I don't know, it felt slippery, but that's not right. Not looking at them is great. Not looking at them is great. Mm-hmm. It's all out of my mouth. Jamie, all you gotta do, just fix your mind on the idea. But these are just sunflower seeds. These are these are just you're eating peanuts. They're so good. Mmm, Jamie. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Just don't look at it. Just look at me. Let's have a conversation and enjoy some crickets. It's really just like the flavor and the texture that's getting me. <laughs> <laughs> Tasted like cricket. Trail mix. It's just like trail mix. Like, or like a bunch of crunched up trail mix. It's just like that. It changed this whole experience. Bottoms up, Jamie. Let's go for the rest of them. Ah, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> so that's sad to think about not, not being fair. Uh, Ask yourself, am I eating crickets right now? <laughs> Probably not. If you open up your eyes, you can see the way that God designed justice and fairness. Clearly, you can see it. God, turned off your, oh, I spit one, it's in my hair. It's in my hair. Open up your eyes. Justice is a beautiful thing. Enjoy the ride. Ah. Blech. A few years ago, I was going on my first hike, and so I didn't realize how difficult it was actually going to be. But about halfway up the mountain, I wanted to quit. But the people I went with kept encouraging me, telling me that as soon as I got to the top of the mountain, the view was gonna be worth it. I couldn't really understand what that meant until I got to the top of the mountain, was able to overlook the city and realize that one, 
If I would have given up, I would have missed out on that incredible view. And two, life in our world is so much bigger than we think it is. Jesus tells us in John 10:10, 10, 10, I came so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. You see, Jesus is talking about you and me. He wants us to be able to experience a life better than we ever dreamed of. God wants to show us that there's so much more to life than we can see. And there's something that separates us from Him. It's called sin. It's lying. It's cheating on that test that you didn't study for, bullying that kid at school. Sin is anything less than God's best for us. The Bible also tells us in Romans 5, 8, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God's Son, Jesus, came, lived the perfect life, died a death that we deserved, rose from the dead three days later so that we can have a relationship with God. God gives us the opportunity to be forgiven for our sins. He forgives as though they never even happened. How incredible is that? That we don't have to walk around wondering if God is mad at us, but that He cares for us so much that He wants us to live a life better than we ever even dreamed of. Maybe today you're realizing that you don't have that relationship with God yet, but today is the day you wanna start. And let me tell you, that is the best decision that you could ever make because God wants nothing more than a relationship with you. If today you're deciding to start that relationship with God, tell someone about it and watch how God starts to use you to change the world around you. You guys, did you know that in the book of Luke, Jesus tells us that, that when one person repents, angels are thrown a party in heaven? That's what's happening right now. I'm so proud of you guys who made that decision, and heaven is too. Find an adult that you really trust, tell them about it, because this is gonna be a long process. This is the whole, your whole life of decision making and walking with Jesus. I'm so happy for you. Uh, all of us, if we can, we're, we're gonna do this Bible plan together. Uh, it's called What Courage Looks Like. You can see it right here. Just search for that in the YouVersion Bible app, or let's see if I can make this happen. You can go to this URL right up here, and, uh, and it's gonna show all of our Bible plans. I'm carefully balancing that. Here, let me just shake it off. There we go. So you, you can go to that link and, uh, and find all of our Bible plans. You're looking for what courage looks like. And I got kind of a heavy question. Do I notice and stand up for what's fair when it doesn't involve me? Because if it involves me, I'm all about it. I'm like, no, 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 wait a minute, hold on. I get my fair share. Do you do that when, with other people, when, with, when things are unjust for other people? Do you do it at, at home with your siblings or uh, on the field or the court or just, just with the world when you see injustice or unfairness? If you can go to the comments and tell us like, if you stand up for what's fair and just in the world, write your story down there. It doesn't have to be long. Just tell us like, how are you standing up for what's fair? Church isn't over yet. We still have some discussion questions to give you and I have a special way to give them to you today. <clears throat> Bye.